Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce ArcGIS Pros as an application that will allow you to visualize, edit and analyze your geographic data in both 2D and 3D. We are also going to learn about the package ArcPy that will provide us useful tools to perform your processing data in Python. Asfree offers different products to implement GIS, that is, using the ArcMap and the ArcGIS Pro software. The first uses Python 2, while the second uses Python 3. So, if you make scripts on RMAP, you will need to update your code to work on RGIS Pro. In this sense, there is 2 to 3 command line utility that can be used to automate much of the process, which is available with both Python 2 and 3. But it's not a complete solution, and additional changes may be necessary. The first thing you must do is install a later version of RGIS Pro 1.3 because there were significant changes to Python with that version. In this case, I will use the latest release, which is 1.4 at the moment of the video recording. Once you install RGIS Pro, you will have installed Conda, which is a package and environment manager for Python and other languages. Those you will work on a conda based Python. For this tutorial, we are going to use the Python window. So, open RGIS Pro, create a new project based on a blank template, name it London Project, and locate it on the root directory. There is C colon backslash. Do it to we don't have any data to process, we are going to create them. Those go to contents located on the left and click on Living Atlas, which is a collection data under the portal tab. Now write London in the search box and press enter. In the list of search results, right click on London Diversity, Feature Lawyer, and click Add to New Map. That map shows the 33 London boroughs in blue. If you click in a borough, a pop-up window opens with the attribute for that region. You will observe the name, the total area, and some ethnicities percent. Now click on View, and then click on Python. After that, you will notice that appears a window called Python. This window can extend from a single line to complex multiple line blocks of codes. It has the prompt and the transcript section. So, you write and enter in your code in the prompt, and the transcript area provides the record of the previously entered code. In this sense, the Python window is a useful environment to learn about and experiment with Python in RGIS Pro. If you right-click on the transcript section, it will appear the Save Transcript option. Those click there if you want to save your code. However, if you do the same in the prompt, you will get the load code option to run your code program. Let's make some examples using the package RPI. So, write import RPI on the prompt. When you do that, you will able to run its model, functions, and classes. The statements to run the GIS tool keep the same structure, but I'll show you that later. Then you must set the current workspace environment. Here, you need to be careful, since the entering of the path may generate some mistakes. There is three types of path, absolute, relative, and catalog. The last one is the path that ArcGIS only recognizes, and it consists in two parts, the workspace and the base name. So, the workspace should point out to a database. Remember, Windows uses backslashes and Python freedom as escape characters. For example, the backslash T represents a tab in literal strings. One technique is escaping the backslash, that is, using double backslashes when you write the literals. The other way consists of typing the R directive, as I show you in the video, that will create a raw string. When you do that, Python will ignore backslashes. On the other hand, an absolute path begins with a dry letter followed by a column, while the relative path refers to the relative location to a current directory. For example, if the absolute path is C column folder 1 backslash folder 2 backslash data and the current path is C colon folder 1, the relative path will be dog backslash 
folder 2 backslash data. The dot represents the current directory. However, you can use double dots if you want to return to the previous directory. So, if you write double dots, you describe the path that is C colon backslash. What would happen if you type in double dots backslash folder 3? You will access to folder 3, which is in C at the same level of folder 1. That is C colon backslash folder 3. Try to combine this command and observe the outcomes. Now we are going to set a variable environment. So set the variable rpy.m.workspace to the catalog path of the project. Remember to point out to the default database, that is c colon backslash london project backslash london project dot gdv and press enter. Now print the variable and check the outcome on the transcript section. In this case, the word env represents a class or rpy, while the workspace is a property of this class. Keep in mind that you will access to any class or rpy after the first dot and you will get to the property of each class with the second dot. Sometimes you don't need to import an entire model. In this case, you can use the from import statement. For example, if you want to import only the env class from rpy, you have to write from rpy import env. When you do that, instead of write rpy at first, you only write env. So set the variable env.workspace to the previous path. On the other hand, if you want to assign a nickname to this class, you have to use the as word. That means after m, you have to type in as, and then the nickname, in this case, m in upper cases. Try to set the variable m.workspace to the previous path. Okay, we can go forward using the from import asterisk statement. In this case, you will import all elements on the model without the need of adding a prefix. However, there are some risks associated with this approach. Those you might not access to the proper element since other object variable models with the same name may overwrite the previous ones. So let's make an example. Write from rpy import asterisk and press enter. Then you can set the variable m.workspace to the previous path directly. RPy give you access to ArcGIS geoprocessing tools, but the name of them might not match exactly to the label name in Arc toolbox. Let's make an example using the describe function, which returns an object with properties such as data type, fields, indexes, and many others. Those, if you want to know the properties of the feature layer of Lander Diversity, you must set the variable desk to rpy.desk. Wait just a second and press tab key. Python will complete the work. After that, a pop-up window opens with a yellow rectangle and the label London Diversity backslash London Diversity. So click on that and move the cursor out the parentheses and press enter. Now take your time and copy in the prompt the three statements that I show you in the screen. You will get the name of the feature, the name of the layer, and its path. Up to this point, we don't know the shade type, that is polyline, polygon, point, and so on. So print the variable desk doc shape type and observe the outcome. You will get a polygon. If you want to check it, click on the arrow point. It will unfold a new label called London Diversity. If you click on it, you will notice the area changed because that is the feature layer. Right click on it and click on properties. Then click on source and you'll observe the geometry type is polygon. As I told you before, RPy has all geoprocessing tools as function, where each one does a particular task. The syntax for calling a tool by its function is RPy dot, the tool name, the tool alias, and then the parameters of each function. For example, suppose that you want to copy the feature London Diversity. In this case, go to Toolboxes and search Copy Feature, which is from Data Management Tools. Then click here, introduce the parameters, and click on Run. It's easy, but what will happen if you need to do it several times? You can do the same using one command line in Python. 
So write our pi dot the name of the tool that is copy feature type in an underscore and the toolbox alias that is management and open parenthesis. Observe that you could introduce many parameters, but two of them are required. The others are enclosed by curly brackets, so they are optionals. Click on London Diversity, since it will be your input feature. Then write a comma and the name of the output feature class. In this case, new feature. Move the cursor out of the parentheses and press enter. Notice how RGIS is processing your instruction. Now go to database and check if the new feature is saved there. There is another way for calling tool functions. So write rpy dot type in the alias of the toolbox which is management and after that write copy feature, open parentheses and introduce the parameters. Remember Python is case sensitive, so if you write copy feature in lowercase you will get an error. Using the previous example, how would you specify the spatial grid one and skip the others? Well, you can set those options as parameters to an empty string or the number sign as I show you in the video. The other way is specifying by the name of the parameter that you need to be set by passing the others. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you like it and you want to watch more tutorials about Python and GIS.